Hi, I'm Kevin McIntyre with the Jones Center at Itchaway, and we are in one of my favorite places on the property. This is called the Turkey Woods. And uh, one of the most important conservation values of Itchaway is the extensive second growth longleaf pine woodlands that we have here, and much of which has native ground cover like you see here, dominated by wiregrass. What you see here today is, is really rare on the landscape, and that's one of the important things about longleaf pine. Uh, we've got about 18,000 acres of mature second growth longleaf pine here on Itchaway. About 11,000 of acres of that is the native ground cover. We've also planted about 3,000 acres of longleaf pine primarily on former agricultural fields but also on some cutover sites and our goal for that is to develop it through time and have it look pretty much like what you're seeing here. One of the things we really like about this site is it's very representative of what we think longleaf pine looked like in its natural state. Longleaf has a fascinating natural history. It's our longest live southern pine. It can live to be over 400 years of age. It's also extremely fire tolerant, which helps explain its historical dominance of the landscape. Other species of southern pine just aren't as fire tolerant, so longleaf had an advantage there. Natural longleaf forests consist of multiple age classes which develop over time. Two of the mechanisms that drive this are recruitment and mortality. What we find is that longleaf pine produces bumper crops of seeds every 10 years or so. And if those seeds fall in areas of heavy canopy cover, they only live a year or two. If they fall under moderate canopy cover, they'll go ahead and begin developing but stay in what we call the grass stage. And what they're doing there is putting most of their energy into root development, waiting for an opening in the canopy. The mortality side of that, our research has shown that we're losing about two to three trees per acre every 10 years or so through lightning strikes or small wind bursts. And what that does is gradually open up the canopy in certain locations over time. And so that's why you'll see these patches of saplings in canopy gaps. I mentioned earlier about the importance of fire to longleaf pine and today prescribed fire is the management tool that we have to emulate that natural process. Because we fragmented the landscape so much uh, through different land uses such as agriculture, urban development, roads, highways, the lightning strike that may have historically started a fire that burned hundreds of square miles until it reached something that contained it like a river or a swamp are no longer able to, to burn that scale of acreage. All right guys, we're gonna be burning burn block 66 today. It's about 100 acres. We got the RCW. Here at Itchaway, we usually burn between 12 and 14,000 acres a year. Itchaway is a, is a very unique example of a working landscape. It's a great forest. Uh, it has a history of fire management that goes back at least a century. Today, we're uh, burning 100 and about 113 acres here in the turkey woods. First thing we do is when we get there in the morning, we look at the weather, see if it's a legal burn day. And then uh, there's typically four of us that's on the burn team. And we'll have uh, burn bikes and usually have a tractor and a hire just in case we need to freshen up fire breaks. We come out, we set a test fire, make sure that the, the winds are what they say they're gonna be. According on what that block needs is is kind of how we go about the firing pattern. It's the most important land management activity. Uh, we have to take it very serious. The staff here are highly skilled. Uh, we're well trained. And uh, you know, there's a lot of planning and care that goes into it. Uh, the average burn size per unit is probably around 100 acres uh, across the board. And it usually takes about 50 or 60 burn days to accomplish all the acres that we want to burn on an annual basis. We burn in between 12 and 14,000 acres and then you know you're a limited time of when you can do that and, and we know how many acres we want to burn but what we don't know is starting in January how many good burn days we're going to have. So we have to take advantage of, of each and every good burn day so that we can get our acreage in. You know most people view fire in a forest as a devastating destructive force but in reality, you know, fire can be a good and, and necessary tool. One of the things I like to say is, is fire is neither inherently good or bad. It's an agent of change.
Here on Itchaway, we've been restoring the red cockaded woodpecker population for over 20 years. Um, historically, there would have been a very large red cockaded woodpecker population here. And that population declined to one individual bird in the late 90s. Um, we've used a couple specific techniques to improve their population. Um, we've put in artificial cavities that they use regularly. And then we've translocated or moved birds, moved red cockaded woodpeckers from other properties to here. And so over time, we've been able to, to increase the population exponentially. Um, we have about 125 individuals that are on its way now. Um, we have 43 breeding groups as of this breeding season um, and 45 active clusters with an active cluster being a location where you have at least one red cockaded woodpecker. As far as their importance across their range, they've really driven a lot of, of management. Um, they are dependent on uh, large mature trees in this pine savanna habitat um, that's maintained by a prescribed fire. And so there are a lot of large publicly owned properties um, that have a mandate to manage for red cockaded woodpeckers. And fortunately, that management provides a lot of benefits for other species that are tied to this system, like gopher tortoises or indigo snakes and a lot of other bird species. So they've, they've been very important regionally uh, as far as conservation and restoration. Our forest management system is based on the Stoddard Neal system, which is really uh, a form of single tree selection developed by Herbert Stoddard and Leon Neal um, on quail shooting plantations in South Georgia and North Florida. By single tree selection, what we mean is that we are going through the woods and choosing trees to take out, usually in an effort to improve the quality of the stand by removing defective trees. Uh, things that we're looking for are uh, basal fire scars, uh, uh, crown health, uh, crown ratio, crown shape. Uh, the coloration of needles can tell you a lot about how healthy the trees are. And basically trying to distribute that evenly across the forest and really replicate those patterns of uh, recruitment of younger age classes into the forest and uh, imitating, if you will, uh, the natural mortality of trees from lightning and wind throw by our harvests. This is an area where we recently completed an operational timber harvest of a natural longleaf pine stand um, within about right at about 250 acres. There were several objectives associated with this harvest, um, one of them being forest health, um, some others being wildlife management, um, and the encouragement of longleaf regeneration and, and release of longleaf regeneration. One of the things that we look for when we're looking at which trees to remove during a timber harvest, um, since we practice single tree selection and, and use a modified stoddard Neal approach, um, we're looking at, at different things on each tree when we walk through the stand. Um, one example might be a, a fire scar at the base of the tree. Um, there's a couple reasons that we might select this tree for removal. Um, it's more likely to catch on fire um, when we're burning. Um, and, and it could catch on fire and, and burn down. Um, also, it can, it can cause smoke issues if it catches on fire and burns for a significant period of time in a, in a smoke sensitive area. And that's not the only factor we look at um, when we're deciding whether or not to remove a tree. Um, in this case, we, we did decide to remove this tree because we have several other uh, mature trees that are dominant trees in the canopy um, that, that'll be released when we remove this tree. This tree has a couple reasons that it was selected for, for harvest. Um, if you look at the crown of the tree, it has a lopsided crown, which basically means all of the limbs in the crown are growing on one side of the tree. Um, it actually has a, a dead, dead top or dead top of the crown. Um, so it's, it's a vertical height growth. It's, it's not gonna increase in vertical height anymore. Um, and it's also a suppressed tree um, that's being suppressed by some of these larger trees that are, that are dominant trees in the overstory. The Sodder Neal system believed in long time scales and looking forward at long time scales. And again, maintaining perpetual forest cover, never coming in here and clear cutting and starting over again. That, that just wasn't in their, their playbook at all. The goal is to emulate these natural patterns of regeneration and, and mortality, demographics if you will, and maintain forest cover through time and reap benefit as well. I feel like the impact of our work here at the Jones Center 
uh, goes a long way to making more people appreciate the values of longleaf pine, particularly the wildlife value. Uh, this, this forest structure provides habitat for a suite of wildlife species that you find nowhere else.